welcome to Nightline. I'm Pastor Benny, and I'm so glad you joined us tonight. It's our prayer that God's going to richly bless you tonight. We want to remind you there at home and wherever you might be, there is a telephone number. You see it right down here, 864-244-1616. We have prayer partners, counselors who, who are standing by. They want to pray with you. They want to share with you. They'll talk with you. Listen, they're here for you, and they just want to be an encourager. They want to be a Barnabas, okay? But they can't be if you don't call us. I hope and pray that indeed you will. Our guest uh, tonight here in this first hour, her name is Donna Wales, and she's got a book entitled, I'll Pray For You, all the way from Rhode Island, where she's coming from. It's going to be a Skype interview uh, for this first hour. And don't go anywhere. It's a fascinating book. And it's, it's about her, uh, what happened to her when she was so abused by her, uh, a husband. And uh, you want to hear this. You want to hear her story. We'll be talking more about her book. That we will encourage you to do. Remember, we always are in need of prayer partners. Would you, would you remember that? Uh, and if you'll call Amanda, we're always ready. She's always ready to stay with you and help you and, and encourage you and show you exactly how to do that. Hey, our scripture tonight is taken from Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 through 21. Listen to Paul's words. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end, amen, and amen. I feel like I'm going to sing the Gloria Patra or something like that. I really do. Anyway, please know, please know, prayer partners are standing by. And uh, again, uh, we appreciate your prayers. We appreciate the very fact that you've joined us. We know there's a lot on television. We understand that. But it's our prayer that you stay with us these next 55 minutes or so, and you're going to receive a blessing. You, you may hear a word of encouragement that maybe you didn't think you needed, but uh, someone like Donna Wells all the way up there in Rhode Island, yeah, a good piece from here, is going to share with you, and she may say something that you need to hear. Yeah, it, it really means. So please stay with us. You're going to enjoy our music tonight, Sherry Ann singing, and so... Well, Sherry Ann, you're with us. God on the mountain, Sherry Ann. Come on. Dear.
Thank you, Sherry Ann. Uh, she is from uh, Utica, New York, and uh, partially deaf. And what a blessing, what a blessing, dear. Your song was, she's going to be with us all night, so don't go anywhere. We've got great music. We've got a great guest tonight, and uh, her name is Donna Wales, and she is the author of the book, I'll Pray For You. This is Skyping one another from Rhode Island. Donna, we're so glad to have you. Welcome to Nightline. And it is a joy. Thank you so much for having me, Pastor Benny. I really appreciate it. I want, I want you to tell our folks a little bit about Donna Wales, if you would. Just a little background material. Uh, people are interested in knowing about our guests, particularly first-time folks. Sure. So I'm a Christian wife, mom, speaker. I teach middle school technology ed. And I'm also a domestic violence survivor. I have four bunnies and a cat named Skittles. <laughs> I, I picked that up in a bio off your website, I think. And uh, it, but is the cat named Skittles because it's a lot of colors or you just happen to like Skittles? Um, my daughter named her okay. and that's, she likes Skittles. So <laughs> there you go. I, may I ask, how, how old is your daughter? Well, she's 16 now, yes. but when she named the cat, she was much smaller, I much love younger. It. I love it. Well, we are so glad to have you. And uh, from time to time, folks, we'll be showing you. We've got this book in the still store, I believe. We can show that uh, just a quick moment, how you can uh, get. If you'll go to authordwells.org and uh, you can check her web beautiful website, easy to navigate. Uh, really beautiful color pictures there, and I, I want to encourage you to go, and you need to get a purchase, uh, purchase this book. You may not be uh, someone who has, uh, has come out of domestic violence, but odds are you know somebody. Donna, we want to talk with you, ma'am, about, uh, about yourself and your journey. Where did the title of this book come from? Where did you get it? So the title of this book is a little tongue-in-cheek or sarcastic um so after my ex-husband assaulted me and the police detectives told me that he tried to kill me mm. um and he had told them that he would finish the job if he found me and so i went i needed a place to stay with my baby she wasn't even two years old at that point wow. That's and i went to the head deacon's house of my church and I thought, you know, he's going to help me because they help, they hosted our baby shower mm -hmm. and, you know, we had been there for dinner and, and different social events. So why wouldn't they help me? They had helped me before, but he stood with his arm across the door of, of the, of his, the back door of his house. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm sorry, we've helped you all we can. He's dangerous. And I said, well, yes, I have, you know, at that point I had bruises. Yeah. And he said, yeah, but we, we can't help you, but I'll pray for you. Mm. And it, it was awful. I didn't know what I was going to do. Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes doesn't that get used? Christians will use that as a, as a, a cliche. I'll pray for you, you know, yeah. just to say, you know, I'll pray for you. We're done now. Talk's over. Go ahead. Get on your way. And, and right. I, I, I was interested when I read this from your website. I thought, my goodness, you had indicated you'd been there, as you said. You'd been there before. And I, you were surprised to hear him say this, were you not? I was absolutely surprised. They had hosted my baby shower not, you know, about a year ago. And right. his wife and I had been shopping. And, you know, we... We were friends, I or I thought yeah. we were friends, and and I was just, I was very surprised. Yeah, but yet you kept your faith in Jesus. You you were obviously well grounded. I'm sure I could only imagine. I've not read your book. 
I look forward to reading it, but I can only imagine the hills and the valleys that you went through. You know, you start right out by telling your story about being physically abused. Can you give us give us an idea of what happened? Um, sure. So the very first time that my husband did anything that was, you know, that would give me a red flag was um, we had gone to visit his mom for Christmas. And, you know, it's polite to get up if you're getting up to get a drink of water to ask if anybody else needs anything on the right. in the kitchen. And I, you know, they all said no. And so I was going to get up. And I turned around to get, uh, you know, to walk out of the kitchen. And he kicked my feet out from under me. And I landed on my backside on, on the hard floor. Wow. And I started to cry. And well, because of course it hurt. And he was laughing. You should have seen your face, he said. Wow. And I said, but you hurt me. Oh, but it was funny. I, I it didn't, you know, I didn't mean it to hurt you. It just was funny. No, you hurt me. And hmm. he never apologized. And I, because it was just a joke, you know, he, he didn't, I, I should have just understood that it was a joke that he didn't mean to. But that was the first time. And then there were a couple of others that were just, um, Mama. very, very controlling and, you know, but, but the Bible says, and I grew up in Christian school and Christian right. college right. and right. my, my family, you know, ministers and, and all of these things. And so, you know, I spent a lot of time soul searching, you know, God, you said to forgive 70 times seven mm -hmm. and you know, Ephesians 4.32, and, you know, be kind, forgiving one another. And so I spent a lot of time soul searching. Was it me? What, what did I, you know, what did I right. do? What was right. my relationship before right. God? And so um, it was really difficult. And there was a lot of um, more sexual abuse kinds of things. Uh -huh. um, again, twisting the scriptures to make it to make to make it what he wanted it to say right, right. was right. there was there also uh emotional abuse as well oh absolutely um you know i i was responsible to do everything for him uh -huh. right and so if i didn't make the right meals oh my. or if i didn't have you know his favorite soda in the fridge then he would he would pout almost or oh eat cereal for dinner. Even yeah. though I had just made dinner, he would, you know, just, and nothing I ever did mm. was good enough. Yeah. Um, I could speak to, I was teaching children's church workers how to be more effective and speaking at Christian school comp conventions and, you know, teaching junior church and all these things and teaching me in the Christian school. And I was doing all of those things and I didn't have a lot of problems communicating, but how come I couldn't communicate with my husband? Right, right. And I was very confused by that. When, when, when would you say, what was the first warning sign that your husband was a volatile individual? What was the first warning sign for you? Was it the tripping there in the kitchen when he tripped your feet out from under you? No. Um, and honestly, I went to, there was a time when my, my pastor at that time was, was preaching on a Sunday morning and God, the Holy Spirit was really speaking to my heart. He, um, and I don't even remember what the message was about, to be honest, mm -hmm. but I really felt like some of the things that my husband and I were doing weren't weren't what they should have been. He was really into pornography and he expected me to, whatever he saw, I was supposed to reenact that. And, and that's not, that's not what the Bible says whatsoever. Right. Um, and so I went forward to pray and I spoke with the pastor just a little tiny bit in passing so that he would pray with me. And he called my husband into his office after, after the service. And he, they must have spoken for an hour or it seemed like anyway, right. but when the pastor and my husband came out of the office, 
he looked at me and said, get in the car, we're leaving. And it was that mean whisper yeah. that I had not heard. And he peeled out of the church parking lot and drove just horribly, like mm. 80 miles an hour back to 25, 80 miles an hour back to 25. And I, we got to our apartment. It was about a 20 minute drive. We got to our apartment and I was in tears and my hands were white from holding on to the, you know, to right. the handles of the right. car. Uh -huh. And I ran to the bedroom and I locked myself in. And I remember falling on my face on the bed, praying, um, Psalm 121, I will lift up my eyes into the hills, the hills from whence my help. My help comes from the Lord because nobody else is going to help me. Mm -hmm. Bless you. Well, all right. Did you suspect or when did you suspect that he might have uh, uh, been cheating on you, infidelity? When, when did or did you ever suspect that? I did not suspect that he was cheating on me. Mm -hmm. It was more abusive, right? Just the just the constant pornography and he wanted to to have marital relations like five or six times a day. Right. And that's just not and we had a, a baby. So you know that that's just not reasonable it's not it's it's addictive behavior right? right and so that wasn't right and and it was really bothering me and i had gone to the pastor oh, you. you know to pray and that didn't work out very well for me i ended up with more bruises mm. from that uh, and we ended up changing churches after that because i embarrassed him Oh my! You know. Look, was you, was your daughter was she, was she born at this time? She was she was an infant. Yes. Okay. So and just starting to walk. And so was she scathed by uh, the abusive situation, or did she come out uh, uh, really from uh, having not been scathed? Was she was she free of that? Because if she saw it or she understood it or could process it, you know that would affect her too down the road. It absolutely does. And, you know, at 16, she and I are in a whole lot of therapy mm -hmm. because um, and and we're looking at the fact that maybe she and I have have a lot of trauma. I mean, they're not saying PTSD, no, but I understand. trauma related stress disorder is what they're calling it mm -hmm. because of all of this. He he stalked us and oh, he it, it just it was awful and um mm. and as i was hiding with one of the lady the church treasurer and secretary actually let us stay with her wow. um her husband had they had an old barn out back and they hid my car under a tarp in the barn so that my husband couldn't find us my goodness because the the detectives told me that if he found me he told them that he would finish the job, that well, he would kill them. A question, I mean, uh, uh, was your ex-husband, is he incarcerated? Was he incarcerated? Um, can you touch on that? Um, he was briefly incarcerated, mm -hmm. but the laws now are different. And so um, the judge said he didn't hurt me badly enough. Oh my. And it was his first offense. <laughs> oh my, oh my gracious! Uh, I, I, I can I'm only, just living and hiding. I can only imagine what what you felt. I, I, I mean, you know, uh, he he's beaten you, he's hurt you, and the judge says a slap on the hand, go home, don't do it again. I mean, come on, you know this this is a ludicrous. We know laws have changed, and and we thank God for that. But uh, right. it sounds like he had a temper. Very much so, uh -huh. but you know, the Navy, because he was in the Navy at this time, uh -huh. um, the Navy sent him to anger management class and that did not go well uh, for me. It yeah. did not go well Yeah, because he would come home and tell me all the things that I was angry about mm. My goodness. and it was just, you know, it was the beginning of the end. Uh, um, it's. I, I, it's a fascinating story, Donna. I, 
uh, you know, I'm so empathetic with you and and uh, I can I can only imagine what you've been through because this is you know uh, this is uh, so uh, as a pastor of course over the years I've, I have heard this too too many times but we're, we're going to be right back with Donna Wales as the author of I'll Pray for You uh, and a survivor of domestic abuse interesting interview she's in Rhode Island don't go anywhere uh, I want you to continue joining us but right now Sherry Ann's going to sing. I can't even walk, Sherry Ann. What I wanted to be I thought that I could build a life sinking thing But I can't even walk without you holding my hand I Without you holding my hand The mountain too high And the valley it's too wide Down on my knees That's where I learned how to stand And I can't Sherry Ann, I'm telling you, listen, uh, just listening to her, is it not a moment or moments of worship? I hope indeed that it is for you. By the way, prayer partners are standing by. Many of you have called in this evening, and we're praying for you. We'll pray at the end of this hour for you collectively. Don't listen. We want to hear from you, okay? We're talking to Miss uh, Donna Wales, who is the author of I'll Pray For You, Donna what was it you were going to say? You, you had something to, to add, I think. Go ahead. 
So I did. So um, I told you that I was staying in hiding and my husband had a temper, my ex-husband now, but he had this bad temper. And so he would go around looking for me in the, you know, after dark and uh -huh. hoping that he could find me. And he told me that he was going to have me arrested for kidnapping our daughter. Oh my. Um, but it wasn't safe for her to be with him. So, um, so I was living in hiding. My car was under the tarp in the barn, right. but you know, I got a pat, I got a call from the pastor of the church that we had just joined. Mm -hmm. And it, this call just shattered my faith and I did not know what to do. My goodness. But he called me and he said, you know, I, I, we gave you a chance to repent. He said, um, but you're going to either have to go back to your husband or we're going to have to discipline you out of the church and remove you from the roles of our church. My gracious. And I didn't know what to do, Pastor Benny. I, I had, you know, I had grown up in the church and I had, you know, mm. that, that list of do's and don'ts that we mm. as Christians try to serve God for. Mm. And I started crying and I didn't sure. know what I was going to do. I, you know, disciplining someone from the church is pretty serious. Sure it is. Sure it is. And I didn't know what I had done that would have warranted that. I mean, I was leaving my abusive husband, but, mm. but not disciplined out of the church. And so I really felt like at that moment, I had to choose between my faith and my life sure. because the the military detectives, the NCIS detectives were telling me that he would, that they thought he would kill me if he found me. My so I could not go back and live with him. No, no, you can't. And, and so now here I am, I'm homeless because I'm not allowed to go back to my apartment. Mm. except with three military police officers. And then I was only allowed 15 minutes to get new clothes or feed my cat. My gracious. My um, gracious. So I was homeless. I was bruised. I was, I was in shock when I, when they took me to the hospital because of the original assault. Right. All I had with me was the clothes that I had on and the diaper bag for my baby. My I gracious. had nothing. Mm. And here is this pastor telling me that if I don't go back to him, I'm going to be disciplined out of the church. Mm. And I was in tears and I said, well, you know, I hope that the judge lets me go soon mm -hmm. um, because I was planning to move to South Carolina, uh -huh. down to Charleston, actually, okay. where my parents have a second home. Okay. And I was, you know, that was part of my plan was to you know, rebuild my life after sure. all of this and figure out what I needed to do. And so I'm thinking through all of that in tears. And I said to the pastor, I'm sorry, I can't go back. Sure. Sure. And yeah. it, that was just devastating. I was just beside myself with, mm. with, what happened mm -hmm. i had mm -hmm. you know all of the things i had been serving god i had done what i thought was right before My, god sure. and i think sometimes that we believe that if we do everything right mm -hmm. that bad things don't happen right but you know but, so, but you know something Donna? i i admire you because first of all uh the lord jesus christ uh, on the authority of scripture would not want you in that type of abusive relationship, all right? Secondly, uh, I can assure you that there are more churches, many more churches that would have never put that before you as a tough decision to make. That I, that I can certainly tell you as a pastor, even now as an interim pastor, having been in pastoring, if you can believe, for 50 years, uh, but I do know that there's some out there, unfortunately, and uh, I don't want to, to be caustic about anything. I just right. want to say, God bless you, dear lady. And, and you, you knew how much the Lord Jesus loved you. And somebody on, you know, on this earth just got a little skewed in their thinking or their theology. And uh, 
you uh, you know you you've got scars and and uh, okay. but but you're working through that and and you're you're moving forward. Obviously, you felt like maybe you're walking on eggshells around this guy, huh? Uh, before oh. uh, before you got the divorce, before you left. Abs him. Absolutely. You know, um, a friend of mine who was not a Christian lady said she went to the Navy Counseling Center uh -huh. and they really helped her. So perhaps, you know, they could help me with my communication issues too. And so, of course, my now ex-husband said, of course, you should go and figure out what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. And so after a couple of sessions, the counselor looked at me and she said, you know, Donna, what if it isn't you? What if it's not <laughs> your fault right. and that just shocked me yeah what if it wasn't my fault you know and so um those sessions were great with her and she talked about that walking on eggshells as mm -hmm. the cycle of abuse right right you know so then there was this site the the walking on eggshells and then something would happen to trigger him as as an explosion mm -hmm. and then there would be some sort of he wasn't really sorry but i should know he was sorry kind of reconciliation I understand mm -hmm. and then there was this like honeymoon period again mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. he was like everything was all good and oh look here i brought you flowers right right trying you know, to make so, up yes and you said that he left a mark on your chest and on your neck uh, yes and that and for what reason? Why did he do that? Well, he was saying that those marks were to to prove that I was his property. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was part of the part of the possessiveness, right? That should have been a red flag. Yeah. But yeah. You know, but we don't notice because we don't expect the people that God sends into our lives mm -hmm. to hurt us. No, we do not. We, we we never, never expect that. You know, you, you said or you say being a good wife meant pleasing my husband. Uh, do you still believe that? I do, but, you know, there are limits to that now. I, I have no trouble with that. I agree 100%. I do. You know, so, so there are limits, but, you know, this whole cycle of abuse and the, the limits, you know, um, I had to decide with those limits the difference between God, God's people and, and God's love. Right. Because sometimes God's people aren't so loving. Right. But God always loves right. us. Yeah, isn't it amazing? Uh, I think it's a quirk in, uh, in the Christian church that many times, not always, many times we like to shoot our wounded. Absolutely. Yeah. And I have felt that yeah. sometimes, you know, there are some Christian schools and um, the, some of the Christian schools that I worked at before, mm -hmm. um, I would not be hired back because my. I'm divorced and remarried. My, 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 my. I mean, it, you know, and this is so unconscionable uh, to be uh, a divorce looked upon almost like leprosy. And, uh, yeah. you know, but you don't have to answer for that type of attitude. They do. You know the forgiveness of God and you know the love of God. And there's so many who love you and support you and are behind you. Absolutely. You know, typical of many abusers, your husband wanted to control you. What did that look like? What, what did that look like? So... Um, at the, toward the very end of our relationship, yes. um, there was a couple that came to visit us, you know, the Tuesday night visitation mm -hmm. that, that churches go, you know, send people out. And so someone had come out to visit us. This couple had come out to visit us and I had, you know, the, the, the nice snacks and coffee right. and that kind of thing. And, and, um, the lady had asked, well, you know, there's a couple people that we'd like you to call and and pray and pray with them and you know make a couple calls for the prayer chain and I looked at her and I said I'm not allowed to use the phone unless my husband unless my husband lets me whoa and whoa. she just kind of looked at me and I I was testing the water right is this sure. couple that's here in my house are they going to help me or not and she said oh 
And I said, yeah, I'm not allowed to answer the door either. And she said, well, that's probably for the best, dear. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bad people out in the world right now. Mm-mm-mm. And I knew that I was not going to get any help from her that day. Yeah. And when, when your church family, the one that you and your husband were attending, when they found out, uh, for example, when, when they found out uh, what, what you were going through or at least what they heard you say, were they helpful to you? Was your church helpful? Not really. Yeah. Um, in fact, one of the, one of the places I, I tried to stay in hiding, um, they called the pastor over and one of the reasons that they said I could stay was that I needed to pray and confess my sin with the pastor. And he read, he read Psalm 51 at me. Okay. You know, the difference when you read something with somebody and when you read it with them. Right. right, and then he stopped and he looked at me and said, "Well, do you have any sin to confess?" And I'm thinking, "Do I? I don't know. I mean, I don't think so." All right. All right. Well, maybe I maybe I enabled him because I would, you know, try to appease the anger part, right? right. Because you don't want to be around someone who's angry all the time. No. So maybe I enabled him. Hmm well, then you need to pray and confess that. So I knew that that was a, you know, that was a stipulation of the place that I was staying. Right. And um, so I prayed and I confessed and then they all prayed. And then I'm feeling very vulnerable because I just shared something that was very close to my heart. Yes. And here comes the lady of the house with brownies and coffee, like nothing ever happened. And, Oh, can I get you some coffee? Oh, it's so nice to have you here. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, wait, but but I just poured out my heart to you, and and you have you have brownies. <laughs> and, and, and you and again, you know, Donna, it just goes to show, so many times, church folks, people just don't know how to respond. They, they, they just don't know. I, I don't know that our churches have even done a good job. I think they're doing a better job in trying Absolutely. to teach the lay, uh, the lay folks. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm listening and, and they're wanting you to repent. And I'm sitting here saying, what do you want this sweet lady to repent of? Um, I mean, hey, we're all sinners saved by God's grace. We, we know that. And, um, uh, but I mean, it seems like there might have been an ulterior motive trying to get you to repent for something that uh, you're trying to figure out what you need to repent for, because uh, exactly. you know, because you had said that you that by feeling I think that you wanted to be the perfect wife, that would automatically mean that you had the perfect husband, <laughs> and it doesn't always work like that. Is that fair? No, to say? it absolutely <laughs> it absolutely doesn't. Well, you know, I was. Um, so trying to make something, trying to have something in common with my husband, I started playing this online video game. Uh-huh. And it's, it's an online kind of a, you know, lots of people play. And um, one of the players who played with us a lot said, you know, your husband doesn't treat you very nicely. Wow. You know, and he made this observation and I thought, huh, huh, exactly. You know, gave me kind of a lot to think about. And this was right about the time that the counselor said, what if it isn't you? Uh huh. And so uh-huh. now here I am thinking about, <laughs> you know, and, and God puts people in the right place at the right time. Always does. And so my ex-husband hates that man to this day. Yeah. And so he told all of our church friends and all of the church people that I was having an affair with him. Oh, my a virtual affair, uh-huh. you know, over the internet. Mm. And my, and my, so my. I was going to run off and live with him and divorce my husband. So that's what he was, that's why they were trying to get me to repent. And just heaping and heaping and he, hang tight. Fascinating. We've been talking with Donna Wales and I, I hope that you're listening tonight because this is speaking to lots of folks, lots of you out there right now. Sherry Ann's going to sing, Where Would I Be? Sherry Ann! In my 
I was telling our, Tiffany, our floor director, Sherry Ann can sing. I mean, boy, she can flat sing. 
and uh, she's blessed our heart. We've been, and let me tell you somebody else, this Donna Wells is blessing my heart tonight. And I can't help but think there are many of you who are being blessed by this dear lady. You need to get her book. I'm telling you right now, I'll pray for you. A Christian Woman's Guide to Surviving Domestic Violence. Very, very good. Donna, we're coming back to you. And, and I want to know about the cycle of, of abuse. What does, what, what does that entail, uh, the cycle of abuse? So it starts with, you know, like you feel like you're walking on eggshells, like there's some kind of something that's just that underlying uneasiness. Mm -hmm. And then something will happen like and that will cause an explosion. And I never knew what it was going to be. Um, so one time I answered the phone, I answered my cell phone without my ex-husband's permission. And he when I said when I hung up, up when I said goodbye grabbed the phone from my hand and slammed it, smashed it against the wall oh my. in a million pieces. Oh my. And it scared me even more because oh our, our little girl was just learning to walk and she had just walked under where he smashed the, the phone. Boy, that had to have been a terrifying experience for you. It was awful. Oh and then, you know, and then the next morning, he said, oh, well, we have to take you to get a new phone because, you know, yours broke and I won't do that. Um, you know, I won't do that again because you might need to call the doctor for the baby or something. Right. When did all this come to a head? Can you uh, go back or remember? When did all of this come to a head between you and your ex-husband? So it all came to a head. I had gone to, um, I was volunteering with the Navy wives group because mm -hmm. at that point he was on a submarine and there weren't, there weren't women on submarines at that point. Right. So it was the, well, the Navy wives group, but some of the younger wives didn't know anything about the Navy and the culture and, and some of the, you know, what all this, right. the insignias and that kind of thing meant. Right. So I had been, mentoring and speaking at this session mm -hmm. and i came back and he had just um he had sorted all our things into what he was taking and what i was allowed to keep yeah what he was allowing me to keep oh my and there were a whole lot of things that i was not allowed to keep like some of my own some of my own undergarments he wasn't even allowing me to keep and i was i was shocked like where are my things yeah sure and he said he said i'm going to give them to the next woman oh my goodness and and so um i was feeling uncomfortable and i had made a plan a safety plan that i was supposed to call my friend rhonda if i felt uncomfortable or unsafe right, right. so i went to the kitchen to call rhonda and as I was dialing and Rhonda picked up, he grabbed me from behind the back of my neck oh my. and my and my left arm. Uh -huh. And he carried me the three or four steps to our apartment door. Yes. And he smashed my body into the into the storm door. Mm. And mm. then um, I believe that God helped me get my hand back through the screen uh -huh. to find the latch of the door to be able to open it. Yes. And he threw me down 13 concrete stairs. My. Pastor Did... Benny, I don't remember touching any of those stairs. Wow. Except for the very, I remember touching the top landing of the, you know, the doorstep. Uh-huh. Yes. And then I remember hitting the bottom and thanking God that he made mm. me go down on my feet because I didn't touch any stairs in between. Did you break anything in that fall? I did not. God oh. kept me on my feet the he entire did. time. He did. He really, really did. I mean, once again, a God thing. And you had to begin seeing that, hey, this is the beginning of the end or this is the end, period. I mean, absolutely. You know, I mean, you know, let me tell you, the Lord doesn't want anyone to stay in a relationship like that. Jesus is loving and caring. You do the best you can to work things out, absolutely. But you know, there comes a time, even Jesus said, you know, you go to people, and you go to their homes, and you knock on their door, and if they won't receive you, Jesus says, there comes a time, this is little John's interpretation, there comes a time when you just shake the dust off your feet, you turn around, and you leave. And you know, in, 
relationships and abusive relationships like this, there comes a time you say, hey, I've had it. That's it. I'm out of here. And you don't right. look back. You don't. And so when, when you did leave, uh, did you have to, was it a court battle that you had to go through? I don't know how the laws or what state maybe you've been in, or was it something that you were able to deal with and not have to see him again? Um, no, it was awful oh because um, my lawyer, we had to be across the courtroom from him, and my lawyer would actually sit me behind a pillar uh -huh. or a post to make sure that he couldn't try to intimidate me. Right. Right. He would call an extra security guard into the mm -hmm. into the courtroom because he was just so so violent and so angry. Even my lawyer ended up getting a getting a um, restraining order so that he wouldn't come to my lawyer's office because he went and he took pictures all of the layout of my lawyer's office. It was just horrible. Mm -hmm. But you know. Mm -hmm. That's when I decided when the NCIS detectives were telling me that this man was going to kill me yes. if uh -huh. I wasn't careful. Uh-huh. Um that's kind of, that's that was pretty clear wow. and that's when God said, "Look, you can't live this way. I no. love you, but yeah. you're not going to live and you, you know, and who's going to parent your baby if you, you know, this is you can't leave her with him. That's no. not safe for her. So oh. that would, God made it pretty clear that that was not a safe place to be. And it took, mm. you know, he still every year or so sends us a nasty letter that he's, mm -mm -mm. you know, I'm a terrible person. And on my daughter's 18th birthday, he's going to come and take her and mm. tell her what an evil person I am. She knows better. She knows. You know. Oh no, she absolutely does. <laughs> of course. And, and yeah. God has protected us up to this point, so it's been great. We've been talking tonight, and I, this has been a fascinating interview for me. We've been talking with Miss Donna Whale. She's in Rhode Island, the author of the book "I'll Pray for You." And I hope you you go to that website, would you please, ArthurDWales.org. I'm telling you something, folks. This, uh, I've not read the book. I just read that last chapter um, before we went on the air. It's chapter 32, Final Thoughts. Uh, and I, I read that, and I, I was just fascinated. I can't wait to, to, to read the book there, uh, Donna. But I want you to know you have been a joy tonight. You've been one of our, you've been a great guest. And uh, I, as I said, mm -hmm. I hope that when you come down this way, we'll be able to meet face to face. I guess the last year with COVID, we've all had to learn to talk to one another through computer screens, TV screens, great. and the like. But thank you for being part of our program. God bless you. And I pray God's going to use you to help young and old alike women who are in battered and abusive relationships and I hope and pray that it will be your words, it will be your book that uh, will change their lives. God bless you dear lady. Thank you for being part of our program tonight. We love you. Look Thank forward you to for seeing you soon. God bless. Thank, Thank you. you. And I, listen, were you blessed by this tonight? I'm telling you, many of you have called in. Many prayer partners have been working and they've answered your prayers. They've talked to you maybe not answering the prayer, but maybe the prayer request that's come forth, they've helped you in working with you. I want to pray for you right now. Many of you have called. I'm going to pray collectively for you right now. Father in heaven, as we've been listening to Miss Wells talk about abusive relationships, I know that in these prayer requests that come in tonight and, and nights during the week, there are many people who face domestic uh, violence. Lord, please, you, you said, I'm the God that healeth thee. And Father, part of that healing, yes, it's physical, but many times emotional and spiritual, and there are those who are hurting tonight. Even as we've looked and read from these prayer requests, loving Father, have your way. We're praying thy will be done for all these who call. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Loving Father, we thank you again for Miss Donna Wells. We thank you for her book, for what she went through. Thank you for allowing her the freedom to share with us. Now, go with us through the balance of this program. I thank you for every opportunity to share Jesus. We make our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Hey, I listen, I hope you have enjoyed the programs. 
I have. Now, I'm not going anywhere. We're coming up on 9 o'clock. We're coming up on the hard break. At least here on Eastern time we are. And I'll be right here. All right, I'm looking for you. Don't go anywhere. Well, you can go get, go get a sip of, of Coke or a cup of coffee or whatever you need to do. But we're going to be right here waiting on you to get back. That's right. Uh, Grace going to be behind the camera. Tiffany's going to be right there counting down. I'm Pastor Benny. I'll be sitting right here. I'm waiting on you. I'll see you on the other side of 9 o'clock. Be right back.